Today's episode of The Dan Cave is brought to you by Hulu's Future Man. Now, anyone who's ever played a video game has wondered if those skills would transfer to real life. Mario made us wonder if we could squeeze ourselves through various pipes to save a princess. Doom made us wonder if we could fight off hordes of demons and send them back to hell. The Oregon Trail made us look at any body of water and think, yeah, I could cock it. And now Hulu's new series, Future Man, is taking that idea to the next level with a story about a janitor with serious gaming skills who suddenly finds himself tasked with preventing the extinction of mankind by a deadly superhuman threat. It's the latest in a proud tradition of gamers using their hobby to save the day. So in today's episode of The Dan Cave, we're gonna run down the best times that gamers saved the world. That's the last Starfighter. It's the exact same plot as the movie. The Last Starfighter. It's a tale as old as time. A kid living in a trailer park is absolutely aces at an arcade game called Starfighter, which actually turns out to be a secret recruitment tool to fight in an actual interstellar war between the Ryland Star League and the Kodan Empire. Did you say war? But of course. Long before we were hoping to get our Hogwarts letters, The Last Starfighter made a generation of nerds wish that they could put their video gaming skills to good use to save the galaxy and you know, eventually move to a faraway planet with a cool new partner. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, hey, this sounds a lot like Ernest Klein's Armada, well, (laughs) you're not alone. If you're thinking this sounds way better than Ernest Klein's Armada, then you are 100 billion percent correct, because that was a huge (laughs) ripoff. War games. Shall we play a game? Oh. Now, normally the answer is hell yes. I mean, sometimes I will queue for a game of competitive Overwatch without even realizing what's at stake, my precious SR. Except in 1983's War Games, teenage gamer nerd Matthew Broderick finds himself playing a very high stakes game with a US military supercomputer called Avoid Nuclear War at All Costs. There's trajectory headings for multiple impact re-entry vehicles. What does that mean? I don't know, but it's great. (laughs) Now, of course, we ultimately learn that the only winning move is not to play, but something tells me we may get a look at the alternate ending IRL pretty soon, unless somebody deactivates Twitter's servers. He's gonna start a war! Tron. Going back to watch 1982's Tron feels a bit wild given what we know about modern technology now, but it holds up pretty well. It's the story of an arcade owner slash hacker who gets sucked into a digital world where he has to compete in gladiatorial games and outwit an evil artificial intelligence. With light cycle racing and disc fighting, this set the standard for what we expect from heroic gamers going forward. Plus, it stars Jeff Bridges before he got all that peanut butter stuck in his mouth where it has seemingly been for the last decade. I mean, seriously. What, what happened to him on Iron Man? Tony Stark ate that in the cave with the bowl of snacks. Ender's Game. Now imagine if instead of a generation of kids being raised on Xboxes to make lewd comments about my mom, they were playing increasingly difficult tactical games to eventually defend humanity from an alien armada. Such was the mind-bending reveal behind Ender's Game, a sci-fi story that made me treat every NPC I encounter with more dignity because there might be a real living, breathing person on the other end. And sure, the morality of it gets a little bit muddy, but the best sci-fi makes us stop and question what's happening around us. And Ender's Game definitely made me stop and question why I was stuck learning about Jerrens when I could have been training in zero-gravity tactical combat instead. Sword Art Online. If you die in the game, you die in real life. Such was the conceit of Sword Art Online, the 2012 anime series that followed the story of 10,000 players who logged into a VR massively multiplayer online fantasy RPG only to find they could not log out. In order to save countless lives, two expert gamers, Kirito and Asuna, must join forces to beat the game and uncover the sinister secrets of the game's twisted creator. Equal parts David Cronenberg and Ready Player One, Sword Art Online is incredibly addictive and will finally validate all those hours you spent grinding away in World of Warcraft to get your epic mount. And yes, mom, it was worth it to get the fancy horse. Sorry if I missed your birthday, but I had a raid, which might come in handy if one day I need to, oh, I don't know, uh, save the world. And those are the best times gamers saved the world in TV and movies. But tell me, which is your favorite? Let us know in the comments below and give me a thumbs up to unlock the good gun. Now be sure to like and subscribe or else you might miss next week's show about the story of a group of bespoke suited secret agents fighting to prevent Nicole Kidman from kidnapping kids and performing weird experiments on their souls in Kingsman the Golden Compass. Until next time, keep on digging. And a special thanks to Hulu's Future Man for sponsoring today's episode. From executive producers Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg comes a hilarious new sci-fi comedy. Josh Hutcherson stars as a janitor whose elite video gaming skills get him recruited by mysterious visitors to travel through space and time in order to prevent the extinction of mankind as we know it. 
All episodes of Future Man are available to watch right now on Hulu. And remember, the fate of the universe depends on it. Let's open up the old mailbag, shall we? At Nate B asks, which Marvel character would make a great host for a Gordon Ramsay-style cooking show? Now, this is a fantastic question, and one I've actually spent a lot of time thinking about, and I have to say, probably Wolverine. I know it's kind of low-hanging fruit to pick Wolverine. He's a popular character, but I think, A, he's already got chef's knives in each hand, and B, he doesn't suffer grief from anyone, much like Gordon Ramsay, but ultimately he wants people to succeed. He wants them to do well. He's the best at what he does, and what he does is inspire others to succeed by yelling at them and occasionally slicing them into tiny bits. But tell me, which Marvel character would you choose to host a Gordon Ramsay-style cooking show? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time.